فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد I was asked a question regarding uh, if this Friday khutbah, the Friday sermon, is done in a language other than the Arabic language. What is the ruling regarding that? So the answer, inshallah, is as follows. First of all, the people of knowledge, Ahlul Ilm, Rahimahumullahu Jami'an, may Allah be pleased with all of them. They have differed regarding the ruling of um, a khutbah in a language other than the Arabic language. They differed. And they stand or their stance regarding this matter is of three views, three views. The first view, which is Ar-Ra'yu al-Awwal, they condition that the Arabic, the khutbah to be in the Arabic language uh, and that it's a condition. It has to be. And uh, this is the view of Imam Malik rahimahullah, and Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. And they use the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari on the authority of Malik ibn al-Huwayrith radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli Pray the way you see me pray. So they said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he used to do the khutbah he used to do it in the Arabic language and so we have to follow him, alayhi salatu wasalam. And that the adhkar is tawqifiyyah. That the adhkar, the remembrance of Allah, is a matter you need an evidence in order to do it. It's like reciting the Qur'an. They also used uh, evidence by saying that, and the Qur'an la yuqra' wa la wa la The Qur'an is not recited, nor is it translated, tarjamatun harfiyya. Word for word trans translation cannot be done. So they said the same way is the khutbah. The khutbah takes that ruling. That is the first view. And it's the view of Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i. The second ra'i, or the second view, is that al khutbah tasuhu bi kulli lugha. That the khutbah can be done in any language. Any language. And this is the madhab of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. And he used as evidence, huh? the view, they based the view on this. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speech, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ We have not sent a messenger إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ Except in the language of the people, of the people he came to. Why? لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ So he can clarify the matter to them. So, لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ means what? Um, يعني لغتهم. He was sent to them in their language. And we all know a balagh conveying a message to a people or educating a people cannot be done إلا بلغة المخاطبين except in the language of the ones who have been addressed. So that is the second view. The third view is التفصيل في هذه المسألة They said the matter needs to be broken down. It's not a yes like that, and it's not a no just like that. It needs to be narrowed down, and there are conditions that have to be put to it. So what was their condition? There are two views regarding the second. The second, they took two stands. Some of them, the third, sorry, the third view, they took two stands regarding what type of tafsir, what type of conditioning uh, is put to it. They said that, we look at the khatib, the person who's doing the khutbah. That's the first view in the second, third view. They said we look at the khutbah, the khatib, the person who's doing the khutbah. If he knows the Arabic language, he has to do the khutbah. He has to do it in the Arabic language. If he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he doesn't know the Arabic language, uh, then we say they say that it's allowed for him to do it in a language other than the what? other than the Arabic language. That's the first view, and that's the view of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. 
the second within the third view is the ones that are observed it, the, the, the people uh, the scenario that is looked at or the observation goes not towards the khatib the khatib the ones that do the khutbah is not looked at who is looked at the mustami'un the listeners ah we look at whether they understand the arabic language or not and the evidence that they used is the ayah which the Hanafis used, which is وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا بلسان قومه. It goes to the قوم, the people, ليبين لهم to clarify. And it seems that it seems like والله أعلم Allah knows best that this view is the strongest, the last mentioned one, which is that the p the listeners are observed. The people who come to the congregation we look at. If the people who are coming to the sermon are people who know the Arabic language, huh? then it's done in the Arabic language. If the people do not know the Arabic language, they do not know the Arabic language, what do we do? We do it in the language which they know. So pay attention here. It's a matter I need to put uh, in perspective for you all, which is what? If the people know the kh- Arabic language, the khutbah is done in the Arabic language, the matter is saved. What about if within the listeners there are a people who know Arabic and they are the largest number and there are a people who don't know the Arabic language who are in the crowd? What does the ruling become uh, then? Now we say if they, uh, the majority are the ones who understand the Arabic language then the khutbah should be done in the Arabic language. The khutbah should be done in the Arabic language. The question is, what about the ones who don't know, understand the Arabic language? What is for them? What rulings do they take? The ruling that they take, inshallah, is the khutbah is translated for them. And it can happen in three ways. The way that the khutbah is translated for the people who don't understand the Arabic language. Which is what? The khutbah, the tarjama, the explanation, the translation of the khutbah is done after the khutbah and the salah. After the salah is prayed, then the tarjama, the explanation is put to them. فَهَذَا جَائِزْ That is permissible. وَلَا بَأْسَ بِهِ And there's no problem with that. The second way is what? And some of the scholars, they said it. Uh, they said, لَهُمُ الْخُطْبَةَ فِي أوراق. It's put to them inside a paper. They're given a paper in the khutbah. And they read it. Whilst the khatib is doing the khutbah, they read. And that's also not a problem. The third one is what? And the khutbah to sajjal. That the khutbah is recorded. Okay? And whilst the khatib is doing the khutbah, a tasjil, a recording is put in their language in which they can understand and is put into their ears. Huh? And they listen to it whilst the khatib is talking. This is also permissible. Um, some people may wonder and say, how is that possible that whilst the khutbah is going on, some may say um, it is not right. It is not right for these people to be doing these actions. The Hanabila and the Shafi'iyah, they mentioned that a person who cannot hear the khutbah of the imam who is doing the khutbah, because he's asam, he's deaf, or he's far from the imam and the imam does not have a microphone, because at that time they didn't have it. So the people could not hear the khatib properly. The, shaf- the halabila and the shafi'iyah state, it is permissible for that person who's deaf, who can't hear, and that person who's far from the imam, who also can't hear the imam, to do dhikr, to do dhikr and send salutation on the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa or read Quran, or read a book of fiqh, or a, bu- a, bu- a knowledge-based book, because he is unable to hear the khatib talking. The same can be used for a a'jami, a person who's a foreigner, who doesn't understand the Arabic language, um, and if the khatib was to talk to him, he's like a deaf person who doesn't understand what the khatib wants from him. In that case, it is permissible for him to busy himself by reading uh, the explained version of the khutbah. Or the khutbah recorded and whilst the khatib is talking is being translated spontaneously. Or for 
way to be done after the salah is prayed. Um, and the evidence that they use for this issue is that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, and the hadith Imam Ahmad narrated in his Musnad, to say it's permissible to do this, is that the Messenger said, إِذَا سَمِعْتُمْ إِذَا سَمِعْتَ إِمَامَكَ The Messenger said, if you hear, the hadith of Darda, if you hear your Imam يَتَكَلَّمُ talking, فَأَنصِتْ حَتَّى يَفْرَكْ Be quiet until he leaves the khutbah. The Prophet conditioned where, if you hear the khatib, the imam talking, what about if you can't hear the imam? This one can't hear the speech of the khatib, or he can, but he doesn't understand what the khatib uh, is talking uh, to him. As a conclusion, inshallah ta'ala, I want to mention as well that the actions that are done whilst the khutbah are going, uh, that are taking place, the khutbah is going on, are two types. The actions that can, can occur from a person. Whilst the khatib is doing a khutbah, is two types. The first one is amalun lil maslaha, an action which is based with maslaha, good, isn't it? Uh, the one that we just mentioned now, which is a maslaha for him to understand the khutbah that is going on. Uh, the second one is amalun lil maslaha, an action, there's no maslaha in it. Uh, and there's no need for it. This one is not permissible. That is not permissible. But the first one is an action which there's a maslaha, there's a haja in it. There's no problem for the person to uh, do those actions whilst the khutbah is going on. Uh, we conclude there, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka tu.